we are edging closer to the end of season one of the Traitors Canada. I think the traitors have been skating on thin ice with some of their decisions for murder, but I feel the latest one was one too far for one particular traitor to survive banishment. The traitor's next victim was May. I feel like there was no upside that would benefit both of them with the choices Koozie and Mike were considering. May was firmly pointing her suspicions in Koozie's direction while Trayvon was aiming at Mike. I just never saw those two having much sway with the remaining faithful to swing enough votes in the right direction. That's part of the reason I think this wasn't a wise decision. I firmly believe May would have been banished based on previous suspicions. Should have gotten rid of Trevon because today the heat would be on May. Most of May's trusted allies were gone but going through the episode, I wondered how much difference it would have made. May would have clearly been a better banishment candidate than who Koozie was proposing. As we approach the last couple of episodes, the traitors need to think carefully which fatefuls they want in the final that wouldn't vote them out. I think there's a couple of candidates for that role that would be helpful to both, while there's one or two others that would lean towards one traitor over the other. As the episode progressed, it was becoming evidently clear the two traitors were playing two different games. Koozie seemed to be pushing Mickey's name while Mike has been putting pieces into place for a possible move against Koozie. I wondered how much bearing the previous roundtable discussion had on Mike carrying out his plan of betrayal. Hearing from someone else that your fellow traitors saying your name can prompt you to take a more offensive approach. Getting them out before they get to you. Was this always Mike's intention but he did it sooner or was it a reactive move? So if you're on Mickey, I'm on Mickey, that's three. Right. Do you want me to come out and ask you questions from the start? So. Oh, no. Despite talking through a plan for the round table, Mike went against it and took a shot at Koozie. I could go around this table right now and say little things that would suspect all of you. But, and I'm gonna start Koozie with you. But I think it's the only tactical way I can win this game. This round table had a little extra incentive given the offer Corinne had given them just before. The players had a choice to either have a banishment or a murder, but not both. It had to be an unanimous decision. So if one player voted for murder, then there would be no round table. If they vote to banish and catch a traitor, then $10,000 is added to the pot. But if they eliminate a faithful, then $10,000 is removed. Even though the traitors would prefer to murder instead of banish, no traitor would be stupid enough to actually say that. It would be a move that would instantly prompt the faithfuls to vote to you out the next chance they get. With the most recent track record of only banishing faithfuls, one wouldn't have been surprised to hear they banished a faithful and had $10,000 removed from the prize pot. Well, they surprised us by actually hitting the right target, with a little help from a traitor. It clearly ended up being Koozie versus Mike in both the discussion and votes with Trayvon being the only faithful who voted for Mike, while the others voted for Koozie. With other instances like this, some faithfuls can come to the conclusion that they were witnessing a traitor versus traitor battle. Despite this and the fact they do clearly say they don't speak much to each other on some occasions, we never got any indication that the faithfuls thought that way. I think I've been killing it in this game, literally. I've been killing in this game, and tonight, you win 10,000. With Koozie's banishment, we know what's coming next, but it's not happening in this episode. A blackmail is on the horizon, but we have to wait until the next episode to find out who Mike picks. Whatever Mike's game plan is will determine who he actually goes for because the list of candidates can have varying results. If he wants an instant banishment at the next round table, then someone like Mickey could be a good choice. People have mentioned Mickey not only doesn't talk much game, but he doesn't talk much about himself. If Mike wants someone until the last episode, then someone like Donna might be good, though I think the weight of the role will be too much and the others will see it. 
I don't think either Gerling or Leroy would be a good choice as I could see either of them gathering enough trust from the others to still believe they were faithful. Trayvon is a hard choice to see where the others would go. The early suspicions have died down but that doesn't mean it can't pop its head back up. If the others were really paying attention, they would have noticed that the times Mike has spoken the most at the round table, a traitor was found. Trayvon is the only one left who voted for Mike. With no murder, Trayvon is still a thorn in Mike's side. Will Trayvon stick with Mike as his next banishment vote and get enough people to join him? Or will Mike pull another trick from his sleeve?